let's continue talking about vaccines. So vaccines date back to the initial Wakefield study that was done linking MMR vaccines to autism. Yes, even though the original article was retracted, and several credible journals, such as the British Medical Journal, have posted um, studies to show the true efficacy of vaccines, the damage has already been done. Okay, so, so we all need to get vaccinated. Not exactly. Um, vaccines are designed to protect us, but they are not designed to protect everyone. So there are individuals out there that are too young to get vaccinated or have existing medical issues, such as severe or life-threatening allergies to the ingredients in the vaccine, or illnesses such as Guillain-Barre syndrome, which prevents them from getting vaccinated. So for individuals that can't get vaccinated, it becomes mm -hmm. important for the remaining population to get vaccinated. Exactly. So this decreases the chance of the flu to be present in the community or to be passed around. This is known as herd immunity. Herd immunity. Well, please explain. So imagine we're all on a boat and the boat has a small leak. Now, the water being the flu is slowly filling the boat. And unless we find a way to bail all this water out, we all sink. So someone miraculously pulls out a bucket or the vaccine. And this bucket represents one individual getting vaccinated. So we all start to bail this water out and soon enough, our boat is somewhat dry. But the leak is still there. So we must continue bailing. Maybe not as hard or as fast as we were before, but continuing. So unless we fill this hole or eradicate the flu entirely, we have to continue bailing the water. But we cannot fill this hole while the water is still flowing through this hole. Interesting. So me getting vaccinated is not just for me. Exactly. And there are many studies out there that show the importance of herd immunity in schools and long-term care home staff, where flu-related pediatric intensive care unit admissions are reduced by 74% after receiving the flu or influenza vaccine. So vaccines only truly work if everyone is vaccinated. Yes. Now, think back to our sinking boat. Um, imagine there's one person in the back with their feet propped up while the rest of us are bailing buckets of water. It's just not very effective. Okay, so, so what happens when you do want to get vaccinated? As easy as it may sound to get the flu shot, it can be confusing. Yes. So flu vaccines are available to everyone over the age of six months, as recommended by the CDC. Um, and this is available at the local public health unit via doctor or nurse practitioner. Those over the ages of five, or even pregnant women and breastfeeding moms, are available to have the flu shot, even in participating pharmacies by a registered pharmacist. Wow, even pregnant women. Yes, even pregnant women. A 2018 study found that pregnant women who received the influenza vaccine reduced their risk of being hospitalized by in for influenza by 40%. In fact, this not only protects the mother, but also protects the fetus during pregnancy and for much for several months after they're born as well. So even though the baby may not be able to get the flu shot up until they're six months old, they have some level of protection. Now, for some parents, getting their kids vaccinated is something of a difficult process, uh, but there are some ways to make this process easier. Take a look. A flu shot is just a little pinch and then it's over and your arm might be a bit sore for a day or two, but then it goes away. The important thing is that it keeps you healthy as well as all your friends at school. If you want to take some heavy artillery, you can take your blankie or favorite stuffed animal or even a book to the pharmacy when you get your flu shot. So these help to serve as a distraction and can even take away from the pain of the flu shot. But Mr. Bear or blankie may not exactly work on your preteen kids. So for older uh, kids, we simply keep them distracted by having them talk about their interests, which can help alleviate some of the nerves and just walking them, walking them through some breathing exercises. And keeping the arm relaxed prior to getting the flu shot is also a really great way to alleviate the pain. Now, can you experience symptoms of the flu even after you get the flu shot? Yes, mild body aches and a slightly elevated temperature are all very normal. However, if you do start experiencing things such as a high fever, behavior changes, difficulty breathing, wheezing, swelling around the eyes or the lips, weakness or dizziness, you will have to contact your local healthcare provider or telehealth where a nurse practitioner is available 24-7 to receive your call. Okay. So these symptoms actually surface within a few minutes, um, usually 15 minutes um, after receiving the flu shot. So that's why it is so important for you to stay the full 15 minutes after you see the flu shot to be monitored, whether that's in your local health unit or in the pharmacy. Oh, now for many of us, we won't remember to get vaccinated until mid-November or December. Mm -hmm. So is this too late? No, actually the CDC recommends to get the influenza vaccine by the end of October, but if you forget, November or December is still not too late. In fact, as long as the influenza virus is still circulating, you will benefit from the vaccine. So typically the virus peaks between December and March, but it can last up or can be active up until May. Okay, interesting. So where can we get the influ influenza vaccine this season? So there are interactive maps such as this from the government of Ontario that does help you find the nearest lo location for health services that you are seeking, such as getting the flu shot. 
-hmm. These include local healthcare units, walk-ins, participating pharmacies such as Rexall, Shoppers, Drug Mart, and even private pharmacies. There is just so much gray area in this field, but knowing the process helps to prepare the individuals who are thinking of potential benefits for themselves. Exactly.